Welcome back to OpenMed School. This is part 2 of Coda Equina and Conus Medullaris. In this session, I will be discussing the anatomical basis of the clinical features of Coda Equina and Conus Medullaris syndromes and how to differentiate Coda Equina from Conus Medullaris. Coda Equina is the lower part of the spinal cord with the nerve roots which imitate the horse's tail. The spinal cord ends at the lower border of L1 in majority of the adults. As the vertebrae has gone more than the spinal cord, the nerve roots have to travel down to pass through the intervertebral foramen. And these nerve roots looks like the tail of the horse and that is why it is called Coda Equina. So this is a little more better view of the lower part of the spinal cord. So this is the lower end and the lower end of the spinal cord the pie matter goes down and it ends at the coccyx and this is called the phylum terminal. Remember phylum terminal is not neural tissue, it is the pile extension. And here you can see the nerve roots hanging down in the dural sac. So this is the dura. So in the dural sac the nerve roots are there. And that is represented here. So this is the from L2 downwards the nerve roots constitutes the coda equina. So from L2 down up to the coccyx. So this constitutes there is sensory nerve roots are there, there is motor roots are there. And remember these are parts of the peripheral nervous system. It is not part of the spinal cord. And the lower end of the spinal cord lies against the L1 vertebra usually. And the segments S2 downwards constitutes the conus medullaris. So conus is spinal cord. Coda equina is part of the peripheral nerves. Both the anterior and posterior nerve roots are there. Five segments above the corners constitute what is called the epicornus. So this is the basic anatomy you should remember. So the cornus medullaris is the lower end of the spinal cord. S2 down to coccyx 1 and when there is a compression or destruction of the corners it is called corners medullary syndrome when the roots are involved from L2 downwards with the bladder dysfunction it is called coda equina syndrome and many times there is an overlap between the corners and coda lesions. That also should be kept in mind. I already mentioned what is epicornus. The segments above corners, again it is part of the spinal cord. So here it is, the roots are the coda equina. The S2 downwards, the spinal cord is the corners and five segments above the corners is the epicornus. We'll repeat once more, coda equina is L2 downwards. Cornus medullaris is S2 downwards the lower spinal segments and the epicornus is five segments above that is L4 to S1. That is the epicornus. So epicornus and cornus are spinal cord lesions. And the clinical manifestations 
depends upon which nerve roots are compressed or irritated the findings are usually bilateral and radicular in nature because the roots are affected as you know the radicular pain is a shooting pain electric shock like sensation running down in the distribution of the dermatomes and usually it exaggerated on coughing and sneezing that is the typical radicular pain so whichever root is irritated you will get pain and when the sensory nerve roots are affected you will get a sensory loss as you know the perianal region is supplied by the s s s234 segments so if that roots are affected you get a perianal sensory loss in corners lesion as these are the spinal cord segments constitute the st s2 s3 s4 s5 the sensory loss is limited to the perianal region but in case of a cordae equina syndrome any nerve root from l2 can be affected so the sensory distribution will be little more wider and depends upon which nerve roots are affected you get the sensory loss so we have discussed the symptoms that is sensory symptoms sensory findings then the motor motor depends upon which roots are affected so if the l5 s1 is affected the muscle supplied by l5 and s1 are lost and then we will check at the root the reflexes the angle jerk you should remember the root value is predominantly s1 so if the angle jerk is lost it means the s1 root is compressed if the knee jerk is affected it is l3 and l4 so it is a higher up lesion so in corners medullaries you can understand the knee jerk will not be affected because the corners contains only s2 downwards but in corda equina both s1 or the angle jerk and knee jerk are affected so if the angle jerk and knee jerk are lost these are lower motor neuron findings and it is consistent with the corda equina syndrome you will not get loss of knee jerk in corner station that's one point we should remember so as told the symptoms they are bilateral in the distribution of the nerves which are affected around 92 percent of the patients will have this pain which is we usually describe as the sciatica again depending upon which all nerve roots are affected in that distribution you can hear the l3 the anterior part of the thigh l4 it will be on the anterior part of the thigh and the lateral aspect of the leg l5 it goes up to the big toe and s1 if the pain will be going down the typical sciatic pain so this pain is usually bilateral then coming to the motor again is a irreflexic paralysis asymmetrical paralysis and so the there will be muscle wasting suppose the l4 segment is affected you will see that the lateral compartment is wasted the shin will be prominent like this if the l4 is lost again you can have ankle dorsiflexion will be affected and there may be foot drop may be there if the l5 is affected the big toe the extensor hallucis is long as will be weak that is the l5 if the s1 is affected you get the weakness of the plantar plexus so depending upon the involvement of the roots so you should check carefully the motor weakness l1 l2 it is a hip flexion check the knee extension that is l3 l4 dorsiflexion of the ankle that is l4 extension of the big toe that is l5 and plantar flexion of the ankle that is s1 these are the major roots you should remember then look at the reflexes 
the angle jerk has already mentioned it is s1 that is usually it can be lost both in corners and chord equina and the knee jerk that is predominantly l4 this can be lost in chord equina because chord equina is l2 downwards roots are affected then bladder bowel and sexual dysfunction is one of the characteristic feature for definition of chord equina usually the bladder involvement is required bladder involvement of a neurogenic origin that is the characteristic feature of chord equina so remember the bladder has got supply from s2 s3 and s4 the parasympathetic outflow which is motor to the bladder that is dead reserve comes through the pelvic nerves so the parasympathetic outflow to the bladder that is the dead reserve which is motor to the dead reserve is s2 s3 s4 so in chord equina in the corner syndrome early involvement of these segments and you can get an early bladder there is again there is another nerve the pudendal nerve which is motor to the external sphincter of the bladder so s2 s3 s4 lesion can affect the pelvic nerves which is concerned with the parasympathetic outflow to the bladder that is dead reserve contraction so if it is affected you get bladder distension that is bladder will not be emptied when the pudendal nerve that is s2 s3 s4 the motor the somatic motor is affected the external sphincter will be will not be functional and you can get incontinence so the neurogenic problems in bladder can be either retention or incontinence then the pudendal branch the pudendal nerve gives a perineal branch which goes to the urethral sphincter which we have discussed and there is another nerve the inferior rectal nerve which is motor to the external anal sphincter so when the s2 s3 s4 segments are gone it can affect the dead reserve it can affect the urethral sphincter it can affect the external anal sphincter so this is the s2 3 4 the pudendal nerve which gives the inferior rectal nerve that is motor to the external anal sphincter it gives a perineal branch which supplies the urethral sphincter and it has also one more branch that is the the d branches of pudendal nerve which supply the bulbo cavernus and ischio cavernus so the pudendal nerve is concerned with the external sphincter of the urethra anal sphincter and the bulbo cavernus and ischio cavernus muscles and as you know the bulbo cavernus and ischio cavernus are concerned with the sexual functions so sexual dysfunction is a feature of chord equina and corner syndrome and the external sphincter of that is a lax anal sphincter the mechanism i already mentioned the inferior rectal nerve which supplies the external anal sphincter will be affected so this can lead on to a rectal dysfunction that is anal tone will be lost and you can get a fecal incontinence and the perineal branch which supplies the external urethral sphincter leads to urinary incontinence again remember without bladder dysfunction anal dysfunction or incontinence is very un- very unlikely so the bladder dysfunction occurs first and then only anal dysfunction hope this point is clear to you i have told about the bulbo cavernus 
and isquiocavenous muscle which is supplied by the D branches of pudendal nerve and there is one reflex called the bulbocavernous reflex which is also lost in so this is done by pressing the tip of penis and putting your finger in the rectum looking for the contraction of the anal sphincter in males it is the penis glans penis and females it is the pressing the clitoris it's not routinely done but you should remember there is a reflex called the bulbo cavernosus reflex the pudendal nerve is needed for the proper sexual function that is erection and when s234 segments are affected in males you get a impotence so that is one history that should be asked in patients with the codaiquina and coma syndrome so we have discussed the clinical features of conus and coda and mentioned earlier most of the time there is overlap between these two i will try to discuss what are the differences major differences between a pure coda equina and coma syndrome first you look at the level coda equina syndrome can occur from l2 to sacral region because the spinal cord ends at the level of l1 so below that any lesion can produce coda equina syndrome conus medullaris is actually the lower end of the spinal cord so it is at the level of l1 l2 vertebrae so one of the major difference is the level at which the lesion second we look at the structures the roots are l2 down in conus it is actually the spinal cord is affected that is it is the lower end of the spinal cord so it's a major difference here it is roots here it is spinal cord the findings are motor and sensory they are asymmetrical and more extensive in coda equina syndrome because multiple roots from l2 down is affected and in conus medullaris it is symmetrical because it is a small part the spinal cord is affected s234 segment only and the sensory distribution as discussed earlier limited to the saddle area then think about the bladder bladder is late in coda equina syndrome and in conus it is early so early bowel and bladder without any motor weakness think about conus medullaris lesion then the symptomatology pain is radicular in distribution because the roots are irritated but in conus medullaris the lesion is the spinal cord lesion so say if it is a compression of the vertebra due to a destruction or some other causes the pain is usually a vertebrogenic pain or a local pain that so it is a backache rather than radicular pain but as mentioned earlier there is usually an overlap so you can get both local pain and radicular pain if it is a structural lesion that is producing compression of the spinal cord and roots that is conus and coda lesion together then regarding impotence impotence is late in coda equina syndrome but is early very early in conus lesion the reason we have explained regarding reflexes both knee jerk and angle jerk can be lost in coda equina syndrome but in conus lesion it is only angle jerk is lost and sometimes you can get hyperreflexia in knee jerk because the lesion may extend to the epicondus and then because of the involvement of the epicondus you may get a brisk reflex in relation to the knee jerk can occur and when you are describing the coda equina syndrome you should use the american spinal cord injury association impairment scale about which we will discuss at a later time and one point a very rare cause of conus and coda syndrome is vascular occlusion 
and there are two arteries of you should remember one is arteries of Adam Gavis you can see the anterior spinal arteries being reinforced by radicular arteries that is arteries that is coming along with the roots so one of the rad the lumbar radicular arteries may be very prominent and that artery is called the arteries of Adam Gavis so involvement of the aortic aorta that is aortic occlusion can lead on to decrease blood supply to the spinal cord because of the involvement of the artery of Adam Gavis and there is another artery called Desbrock's Gotteron artery this travels along as L5 S1 nerve root goes to the corners it is again one of the radicular artery arising from iliolumbar artery so there are two arteries of which the more important one is the artery of Adam Gavis so vascular occlusions ischemia to the spinal cord can also produce a corners lesion so in this video we have discussed the anatomical aspects of coda equina and corner syndrome and epicornus and we have discussed how the clinical features are arising the management and the etiology was discussed in the previous video hope it was useful to you if you like this you may please subscribe to my channel thank you